and you can go out there and they just look like a football field of salmon just rolling around on the surface. They're sunning themselves. Difficult to catch when it's calm. Yep. When it's rough, you troll and you just smack them, right? They just switch on. And they do that for a while, but then they'll get into a bit more of a regular feeding pattern. And yes, you could then pretty well say trolling guys will often struggle when it's calm, just like most tuna fisheries. But then as soon as it gets rough, the trolling can be amazing. But when it gets calm, that's when the poppers really do their thing. So the other thing that's quite dark is early season, like say back in January when I was getting the tuna, you can't always see them. You mark them, but you know they're there because there's about 85 million mutton birds out there, right? And the mutton birds <laughs> follow the, the tuna around, right? The tuna aren't busting, but they follow them. And it's quite simple and a good tip for people is, is all you've got to do is watch the mutton bird. They're different to a, or a tern and things like that or a frigate bird. They'll sit on the water and they'll stick their head in the water and they just keep looking down. And if they're actually looking down, putting their head in the water, they're looking at a school of tuna. So even though you might not see anything, you can literally go up to them, start casting your popper around, and oftentimes you'll get a bite and you go, it was like there was nothing there, but the fish are just there. That is a great tip for anyone listening in because, yeah, definitely I got the vision in my head of those unbelievable frenzies with birds diving, gannets diving, the Caspian turns everywhere, you know, the sourries breaking the surfaces, tuna breaking the surface. Got that picture, no problems at all. And now I'm wondering, Lee, how many times when I was fishing down in Tassie did I go past tuna, seeing the mutton birds sitting on the surface and thinking, they're just resting up, they've already had a feed, I'll keep moving until I find fish. And and maybe those birds were marking tuna that I didn't know about. Yeah, quite possibly, mate, quite possibly. And it's a bizarre fishery. And they do bust up here during the warm months and they do bust up during the cooler months and all that sort of stuff. But just because they're not busting up doesn't mean they're not there. But again, it's quite bizarre, Greg, that they can be, you can drive over those birds and sound over them. And the tuna are sitting 10 to 15 metres down and you can pull a spread of lures over them and they won't eat it. But then you pull up, sit off a patch, cast into it and you get bit with a popper. It's a bizarre, but a really fun fishery. The other thing I'd say to people that don't expect just because you've seen 5,000 tuna that it's a fisher cast. You do still work really really hard to get the bite some days they're on and you'll just smash them but in general you'll throw your popper at a lot of fish to get a bite but the upside is there's so many fish that you're probably making your chances greater of catching a fish it's not like one or two patches of fish for the day there's generally bulk amounts of fish in the area yeah and look again going back a few years ago i can remember people going out their mission was I'm going to catch a tuna on a popper. I'm going to catch a tuna on a stick bait or just a cast lure of some sort. And they would go for trip after trip after trip. Yep. You know, they could probably have got a lot of fish trolling, but they'd go trip after trip after trip until they got that fish. That was their mission. Now yes. you're saying, well, there are times where you've got to stop trolling and cast lures instead because it's going to be more, more productive. Yep, very much so, very much so. And the, the thing I've done well with too is when you're in an area where guys are trolling over a patch of fish that maybe were busting and doing all that, I'll often just sit in that area and if there's still a few mutton birds hanging around and putting their head in the water, there's still fish there and all the boats will come do their thing and then they'll disappear. And if you sit there, those fish will regroup, right? And then you'll see the mutton birds regroup or a fish might bust up or something. You're Johnny on the spot. And if you can be there when those fish regroup or, or start coming to the surface and if one or two fish bust, if you can get your lure at them straight away, that is one of the best times to get a bite. Like you do tend to get a lot more bites on that. The other one that worked really, really well for me this year, and it, I, I sort of cottoned onto it just out of pure frustration. I had this day, it was glass calm. It was a perfect summer day. The tuna were busting up. 3,000 casts into it, I still hadn't caught one, right? And this is casting at busting fish. And in pure frustration, in the end, I was just sitting there and the school had moved off, but there was probably half a dozen mutton birds sitting on the, on the water and they kept putting their head in the water. And I'm talking, this is a minute to two minutes after the school had disappeared. And I've gone, oh, bugger it. And I've just cast back in and I've hooked up straight away. And that day, every fish I got was off basically the back of the school. Once the main school had gone through, I was picking up the stragglers or something like that. So I really started to focus on that through other parts of the season and it proved to be super effective like super effective way to catch the fish 